Yo, what is going on, Fantasy Addicts? I'm your host, That Fantasy Addict, and today we got another mock draft coming your way. This one is a 10 teamer from the first overall selection. We've already done two mock drafts. This is the third one. It's going to be a great one. 15 rounds. I'm going to give you some analysis on every single pick that we have, as well as some picks from the CPU. So if you don't already know what this website is, this is Sleeper, sleeper.app to be exact. They have a website, desktop website. They also have a mobile app, and it really is the best way to draft there is. It's great to have your leagues on because the format is just, it's great. They let you customize a lot of things, and the app just looks wonderful. It's really aesthetically pleasing, and to do mock drafts, it's phenomenal as well. So we're going to be doing it on this website. I'll leave a link to this website below in the description. And with that being said, let's get right into the draft. All right, so we're on the clock and it's between two players really at the first overall selection, Christian McCaffrey and Saquon Barkley. No one else would tell you to draft anyone else. And if they do, then you should not be listening to their advice. But I don't even think it's that much of a competition. CMC pretty much takes this with ease. He was phenomenal last year. No matter how bad his situation is, he will produce. He is in arguably a better situation than he was last year. Kyle Allen was not great. He force fed on the ball for sure, but they were not doing as much scoring as they could have and as they will with Teddy Bridgewater under center. I do think this offense will be better than they were last year. Christian McCaffrey will have more red zone opportunities Although I don't think that he'll be scoring more points this season than last season, I do think that his fantasy production could be on par with what he did last season, and I would love that all day, any day. So it's not a competition here. Saquon Barkley is the first overall pick. Then Saquon goes, no surprise there, followed by Zeke, Derrick Henry, Kamara, Michael Thomas, Joe Mixon, Dalvin Cook, Kenyon Drake, Josh Jacobs, Devontae Adams and Tyree Kilgo, Nick Chubb, Miles Sanders, Hopkins, Julio, Austin Eckler, and the two quarterbacks, Lamar Jackson and Mahomes go back to back. And that same thing happened in one of my other mock drafts. They went back to back and Lamar Jackson went ahead of Patrick Mahomes. And like I said then, I do not like taking Lamar over Mahomes just because we've seen Mahomes put up such elite numbers for two seasons in a row. We haven't seen the same thing out of Lamar. I'm not completely sold on him being this elite for super long. I want to see another season out of him before I draft him over Patrick Mahomes. I know Patrick Mahomes is going to be a top two, three quarterback. I can't say the same thing with confidence about Lamar Jackson. Looking at these other picks, I don't have too many problems here. I don't really like taking Joe Mixon ahead of Josh Jacobs. I actually don't really like taking Joe Mixon or Kenyon Drake ahead of Josh Jacobs. Dalvin Cook is a risk right now. We don't know if he's going to hold out or not, but if he doesn't hold out, obviously take him ahead of Kenyon Drake, Josh Jacobs, all those guys. I'm glad to see Devontae Adams going as the wide receiver too. That should be happening. And I'm also glad to see Tyree Kill going ahead of Julio and Hopkins because I'm not a huge fan of those two receivers this season. Nick Chubb, Miles Sanders, both solid picks, and Austin Eckler at the 207, solid as well. So now we are up. We obviously have Christian McCaffrey, who is pretty much the most reliable running back you could possibly have. Looking at the other running backs available, Aaron Jones did fall to us, and I don't think he's going to be as productive this season as he was last season, but I certainly believe that he can be the deciding factor between a win and a loss in any given week. He can go off for 30 points no matter who he's playing. So I do like him. Looking at wide receiver, Chris Godwin is available. He's the only receiver who I would consider taking at this position. Mike Evans, Kenny Galladay, Adam Thielen, those guys are not worthy of a late second round pick or early third round pick. And of course, we do have Travis Kelsey as well. So it is a tough decision. I need to decide between Aaron Jones at running back, Chris Godwin at wide receiver, and Travis Kelsey at tight end. We're going to take two of them. So 
with tight ends, even though I do like having Travis Kelsey, there is a lot of value late into the drafts. Past the 10th round, you can get guys like sometimes Tyler Higby and almost always Noah Fant, Hawkinson, Jacecki. And those guys are basically cheap. And some of them will actually be on the waiver wire to start the season. And that is a lot of value for sure. At wide receiver, if we were to wait until the fourth round, the late fourth round that is, It is risky because I don't know if we would have guys like Robert Woods, like A.J. Brown, like D.J. Moore. If I was guaranteed one of them, I might not pick Chris Godwin, but I'm just not sure if we're going to be guaranteed those players. At running back, it definitely is risky because Chris Carson, Le'Veon Bell, those guys, probably even David Montgomery, will be gone. So I absolutely have to take a running back here. Even though we have Christian McCaffrey, you still start two running backs, and I need to take at least one running back here. I could not blame you if you took Aaron Jones and CEH. Honestly, I could not blame you for that, because at that point, you are getting three RB1s, pretty much. But I'm just going to take one here, because I do want some solid pieces at other positions. So we'll take Aaron Jones here, and now we have to decide, do we want Chris Godwin or do we want Travis Kelsey? I do think there is more value super, super late into drafts at tight end because when we get into the 12th round for receivers, there is not a ton of value there. Yes, there is a lot more value in the fourth and fifth round at wide receiver than at running back. But when it comes to tight ends, there's 15 to 18 who I'm actually fine with starting on my roster. So we're going to pass on Travis Kelsey and we will take Chris Godwin because at the end of the day, he's running those short routes that Tom Brady loves to throw. This offense still should be good. And an offense led by Tom Brady when you're the number one target on that team is something that I want to have on my roster. He's better than Julian Edelman, and Julian Edelman always produced. So give me Chris Godwin right here. After that, Travis Kelsey goes, not a surprise, followed by Todd Gurley ahead of CEH, which I do not agree with at all. Thielen goes, Kittle goes in the mid-third round, Mike Evans, Melvin Gordon, James Conner, Leonard Fournette, all of those risky running backs who we're not quite sure about. Kenny Galladay, Juju, both fall. Le'Veon Bell, Odell, David Johnson, Amari Cooper, Allen Robinson, Cooper Cup, and the rookie Jonathan Taylor. Now, looking at the receivers who fell here, in hindsight, I would have went with CEH or Travis Kelsey with my third round pick because I am absolutely fine with starting Calvin Ridley and DJ Moore and just locking them in every single week. I think there's a tremendous chance that they both finish as wide receiver ones and you can get them in the late fourth round or early fifth round in this draft at least. But when I was drafting, I wasn't quite sure if they'd be there and I played it safe and took Chris Godwin there because better safe than sorry, I didn't want to be with my fourth round pick and looking at possibly drafting T.Y. Hilton or Cortland Sutton as my wide receiver one. Of course, at tight end, the best available is Mark Andrews because Kelsey and Kittle already went, so we're not going to be taking a tight end right here. Chris Carson is available, who I do like. There are some concerns, of course. Rashad Penny is really, really good, but I don't think that this is going to be his year to absolutely take over. I do think Chris Carson is certainly the top running back on this roster, but there still are some question marks about his health and everything. David Montgomery is solid, but I would not even think about drafting him over Chris Carson. And like I said, at receiver, Calvin Ridley and DJ Moore are both there. I am tempted to take both of them, but I do know that there should be guys like Terry McLaurin 
and DJ Shark available, or at least it'd be, it's going to be very close, and I really hope that they're available. So I think that I'm only going to take one wide receiver because I still do have Chris Godwin, and I don't want to leave the fifth round with only two running backs. So with one of our picks, we'll take Chris Carson here, who I'm flattered to have at my flex position or my RB3. And for my wide receiver two, I'm completely, completely satisfied with having one of Calvin Ridley or DJ Moore at my wide receiver two, but we have to choose between them. And you can go either way. If you wanted to draft AJ Brown or Robert Woods, I wouldn't necessarily blame you, but I do think DJ Moore or Calvin Ridley is certainly the play here. They're really neck and neck, in my opinion. You can go with either one, and because I really think this is a 50-50 split. You could go either way, and there is not a single soul who should be blaming you at all for taking one of these players over the other. I am going to go with Calvin Ridley just because I feel like he has a little more upside because of the fact that we look at his teammate Julio Jones, who's being drafted in the second round, and when Calvin Ridley was playing with Julio Jones last season in PPR scoring, he actually outscored Julio Jones. So I think Calvin Ridley certainly has the possibility of being a top five wide receiver. I think you could say the same thing about DJ Moore, but there's just a little bit of a better chance that that happens with Calvin Ridley. Once again, you can go with DJ Moore and that's completely fine, but I do think Calvin Ridley has a little more upside especially if Julio Jones goes down because Julio Jones has not played a ton of full 16 season games. So if he misses two or three games, which is certainly fairly likely, then for those few weeks, Calvin Ridley is a top five wide receiver right then and there. So I'm going to go with Calvin Ridley here. But once again, if you want to go DJ Moore, feel free to do that. And the next pick is DJ Moore. So I'm not surprised by that. Then Devin Singletary goes, super efficient last season, but did not get the volume that he deserved, followed by Raheem Moster, DK Metcalf, AJ Brown, Mark Andrews, Robert Woods, Mark Ingram, David Montgomery, Keenan Allen, T.Y. Hilton, Cam Akers, Kyler goes, DeAndre Swift, DJ Shark, Tyler Lockett, Zach Ertz, Cortland Sutton, and now it is our pick. So I do think that the Raheem Mostert pick in the middle of the fifth round is certainly very risky, but there certainly is a huge reward there because Raheem Mostert, for all we know, could go off for 17, 18 points per game, especially if Debo Samuel misses some time. Robert Woods, AJ Brown, DJ Chark, Keenan Allen, all in that fifth to sixth round range is great in my opinion. I like them all there. Cam Akers goes in the sixth round. That's a little earlier than he normally goes, but he definitely has RB1 potential for sure. To think that DeAndre Swift is going two picks after Cam Akers is just ridiculous. Cam Akers has such an easy path to taking over this backfield, yet DeAndre Swift, I don't think even has a chance of being the featured back in this offense because Carrion Johnson is still there who is good when healthy. Then DJ Chark, Tyler Lockett, Cortland Sutton all go. They're all very talented players. Not all of them are in the best situation. I think Cortland Sutton has a lot of competition for sure. Tyler Lockett is on a run first team and DJ Chark isn't on the most talented roster, but they all certainly are very talented. And if their teams do good and they can have a guaranteed role, then I certainly love them all. Now, looking at who's available, Kareem Hunt and Darius Geis are both there. I do like both of them. Kareem Hunt is a safer player. If you look at how he finished last season, even though Nick Chubb was there, it was Kareem Hunt's first season in Cleveland, and he was putting up double-digit points most weeks. And he has the potential to be a top-five running back in any week that Nick Chubb goes down. So... He's pretty much banking on an injury to Nick Chubb. If he's going to be an RB1, especially a mid to high RB1. But Darius Geis really 
has a clear path towards being the featured back, even if not a single injury occurs in this backfield. He's the most talented running back here. Antonio Gibson is there. They drafted him, but he might even be used as a wide receiver, not just as a pass catching back, but literally as a wide receiver. So Darius Geis still could play third downs and he could be a featured back. He doesn't have as much potential to be a RB1 just because he's not on the best team and he doesn't have as much experience producing at such a high level like Kareem Hunt has, but he has probably more potential to be an RB1 because he has a clear path towards being the featured back. He might not have as much potential to being a top five running back, but to be an RB1, I think he has more potential than Kareem Hunt. Looking at our roster, we have Christian McCaffrey, Aaron Jones, Chris Carson. Aaron Jones and Chris Carson are both a little risky, so someone like Kareem Hunt could be pretty valuable, knowing that if one of them goes down or whatever, Kareem Hunt could fill in without question. But I do like the upside of Darius Geis being able to finish ahead of Chris Carson and Aaron Jones. I can't say the same thing about Kareem Hunt unless Nick Chubb goes down, but I don't want to rely on an injury. We're not going to take a quarterback. We're only going to take one wide receiver. And I already know who that wide receiver is, and I'll get to him in a second. So we're going to take Darius Geis here. I love my running back core. I have four solid running backs who three of them I can trust as long as they're healthy. And one of them, I'm not sure if he's going to be great, but there is a very good chance he is. Now, our next pick is going to be a wide receiver. We have Godwin and Ridley, but I do want one more receiver that I can count on. And Diggs certainly has a lot of potential. He was phenomenal when running deep routes. He was seriously incredible. And Josh Allen loves throwing it long. He's not the most efficient quarterback throwing it long, but he still loves to throw it long nonetheless. And Stephon Diggs should be the number one wide receiver on this team. But there's just too many unknowns about this team. We don't know if Stephon Diggs is going to have chemistry with Josh Allen. We don't know if this team is going to run it a lot more than some people anticipate. We don't know how good this team is going to be because if they're really, really good with their defense leading the way, they might just be grounding and pounding it. You know, we we don't know what's going to happen with this team. Debo Samuel, unknowns there. Obviously, he just got injured, which if you haven't already seen my video on it, I definitely recommend after this video going in the description below and clicking on the video that covers Debo Samuel's injury and the exact impact, not only for him in fantasy football, but on the entire 49ers roster. I go very in-depth there and you definitely have some knowledge to gain out of that. So I'm not drafting Debo Samuel until we know that he is going to start the season healthy. AJ Green, more unknowns there. We don't know if his production is going to be hindered by his injury. We don't know what his situation is. I'm staying away from him. And then as we go down here, Marquise Brown, Devontae Parker, Cooks, all of these guys I absolutely love. And a lot of these guys like Michael Gallup, Tyler Boyd, Deontay Johnson, I feel like have some potential, but still have a decent floor. But no one here compares to Terry McLaurin, who was incredibly efficient. He was one of the best wide receivers last season, not just amongst rookies, but amongst every single wide receiver. He was one of the best. He was just in an awful situation. And yes, that team still is bad. And yes, Dwayne Haskins is not going to turn into Patrick Mahomes overnight. But I do think that Haskins will make an improvement for sure. This team should throw it a lot more. They were awful last season, yet they were 28th in team passing plays per game. That should certainly change. There is no reason why that wouldn't change. They should be at least average in passing plays per game. Terry McLaurin is certainly the wide receiver one on this team. He's going to get a ton of targets. He is phenomenal. He is such a great prospect. Love him in Dynasty. Love him in Redraft. Love him everywhere. We are going to take him as a player with a solid floor, but immense upside for sure. So we take him, then Kareem Hunt goes, who I was debating with between him and Geis. 
Then Debo Samuel goes, Diggs goes, Watson and Prescott go back to back, AJ Green, Brandon Cooks, Darren Waller, Russell Wilson goes right after those two quarterbacks and Watson and Prescott, Keyshawn Vaughn, Tom Brady continues the trend of wide receivers going in these middle rounds, Devontae Parker, Jarvis Landry, Damian Williams, who is going to be replaced by the rookie CEH, Michael Gallup, Marquise Brown, J.K. Dobbins, and Tyler Boyd. I wish Tyler Boyd fell to me. I do really like Tyler Boyd. He is very safe on a weekly basis. And if Joe Burrow absolutely balls out, and this offense is very, very good, then Tyler Boyd could pretty much be the 2018 Juju Smith-Schuster, right? The wide receiver two on the team. Of course, A.J. Green probably will be the wide receiver one on this team. So Boyd is the wide receiver two, a slot receiver, and could absolutely go off for over 1,300 yards. But he didn't fall to me, so that is unfortunate. But it's okay, because we have some quarterbacks here, but I'm not going to take a quarterback this early. We have some pretty good running backs available who I like. Ronald Jones, Alexander Madison, James White. I think James White is a very safe player. We saw him always be utilized in that New England offense with Tom Brady, who likes to throw passes to the running backs and throw screens and throw shorter passes. That's the same thing with Jarrett Stidham. This offense should keep the same principles that they had with Tom Brady. Alexander Madison, of course, in redraft is, I won't say useless, but not really startable unless Dalvin Cook gets injured or holds out. But at this point, I'd say there's over a 50% chance he either gets injured or holds out because he's talking about holding out. And even if he doesn't, he's gotten injured pretty much every season that he's been in the league. So we don't know what's going to happen with him. Alexander Madison is an RB1 for every week that Dalvin Cook is out. And Ronald Jones is in an offense that, yes, they love to pass it to the running backs. And we don't know if Ronald Jones will be used in that role. Of course, he'll be passed to from Jarrett Stidham just throwing dump offs, but I'm not sure if they'll be having designed plays specifically to throw it to Ronald Jones, but either way, he is the best runner on this team. Keyshawn Vaughn is not great. His college numbers were heavily inflated due to about three games that he absolutely went off on awful run defenses. He wasn't that impressive. So I do think Ronald Jones has a clear path towards being at least the starting running back on first and second down. Then at wide receiver, Deontay Johnson is there. Julian Edelman is there. I think Julian Edelman, just like James White, is a very safe player. Deontay Johnson is a little riskier, but I am willing to take that risk considering we have Chris Godwin, Calvin Ridley, and Terry McLaurin. They're all good players and... I feel pretty confident in them. I do like Marvin Jones, but I feel like there's a chance that I could wait on him and hope that he falls to me at my next pick. I'd absolutely love to get him there, but I can't completely count on that. I might have to settle with someone like John Brown, like Michael Pittman, like one of those guys. But looking at our roster... Christian McCaffrey, Aaron Jones, Chris Carson, Darius Geis. I'm happy with that. Godwin, Calvin Ridley, Terry McLaurin. I'm happy with that, but we certainly need one more wide receiver. At tight end, there's just no one worth getting. Gronk, Evan Ingram, none of them are worth it right now. So, and quarterback, no one worth it right now either. So, I'm thinking that we'll go with one running back and one wide receiver here. That wide receiver, for me, it depends if you want to go risky or safe. Safe, you go with Edelman. Deontay Johnson is the riskier play. I do have some players who I like, but Godwin isn't necessarily the safest player. He does have a new quarterback, and there still is a lot of talent on that offense. Calvin Ridley is the wide receiver, too, on that team. We don't exactly know how good he's going to be on that team. Not to mention Todd Gurley is there, who's a touchdown machine. McLaurin is on a bad team, so even though I think all these players will be good, they are a little risky. So I would like to go with the safer option now that I think about it in Julian Edelman. 
a player who I know is going to produce. And at running back, I was thinking about James White, but now that we took Julian Edelman, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I would rather go with a safer player than Alexander Madison, but not super, super safe, and someone who still has RB2 upside in Ronald Jones, who I think is a steal getting in the draft this late. Then Sonny Michelle goes, followed by Deontay Johnson, two tight ends in a row, Evan Ingram and Gronk. Alexander Madison goes, Marlon Mack, Drew Brees, Matt Breida, Hayden Hurst, Philip Lindsay, James White, Will Fuller, Jerry Judy, the rookie, Emmanuel Sanders, Tevin Coleman, Matt Ryan, Marvin Jones gets snubbed two picks before me, and then Henry Ruggs goes, and now it is our pick. So let's take a look at quarterbacks, Aaron Rodgers and Josh Allen. I like both of them. Considering how good our roster is, it might be worth it to take a quarterback right now. At tight end, I love Tyler Higby. I'm definitely going to take Tyler Higby here unless someone outstanding at running back and wide receiver is here. Looking at running back, I like Latavius Murray just in case Kamara goes down. Jordan Howard is okay, but he will be in a timeshare in that offense. So I'm not super excited about either of those players. But at wide receiver, I do like Darius Slayton a lot. So we have some solid receivers in Godwin, Ridley, McLaurin, and Edelman. It's time for maybe a little more risky receiver. We took Edelman a few rounds ago at the late 8th round. Now in the late 10th round, I'm thinking we'll go with a little more high-risk, high-reward player in Darius Slayton, the sophomore wide receiver who I covered in what was a three-part series, breaking down sophomore wide receivers. It includes guys like Darius Slayton, Terry McLaurin, A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf, and many more. I'll leave a link in the description below to that series. Definitely go check it out, but not before you check out the Debo Samuel video if you haven't seen that yet, because that video is more important. That video is probably the most important video that I have put out. So check out that video before any other video for sure. So we're going to take Darius Slayton here. And at running back, even though I do like Latavius Murray, we still have a lot of good running backs. And our roster is so set that at tight end, Tyler Higby here, I absolutely love. The Rams absolutely loved to use Tyler Higby alongside Gerald Everett with Gerald Everett being a little more of a blocking tight end than Tyler Higby. And once Gerald Everett was out for a few weeks, they utilized Tyler Higby, having him go six for 100 and a touchdown pretty much every single game. And even when Gerald Everett came back, they were just using Tyler Higby. So I do like Tyler Higby, but he is a late round tight end. And even though I love him, I do think that there still is innately a little bit of risk with him. I wouldn't be completely surprised if he didn't do that well, which is why I'm certainly going to have a backup tight end, because even if Higby is phenomenal, he always could go down. He will have a bye week, so I'll need a replacement. And no matter what, I could always put that backup tight end in my flex position if I need him. And a guy like Noah Fant, like Hawkinson, like Dallas Goder, who just got sucker punched a few days ago, I would like one of those guys, like Noah Fant, Jaseki, Dallas Goder, on my bench just for a little bit of security. But for now, we're going to go with Tyler Higby because we haven't taken a starting tight end yet. And we have such a solid roster of running backs and wide receivers. Then back-to-back tight ends go with Hunter Henry going right after my Tyler Higby. Jordan Howard goes, Carson Wentz and Josh Allen go back to back, carry on Johnson, Christian Kirk, Aaron Rodgers, two defenses go in a row, Buffalo Bills and San Francisco 49ers, three running backs go in a row, Latavius Murray, Zach Moss, and Tariq Cohen, followed by Big Ben, CeeDee Lamb, Jared Cook, Jamison Crowder, McCole Hardman, and Matthew Stafford. Now it is our pick, and let's take another look at our roster. So, running back, Christian McCaffrey, Aaron Jones, Chris Carson, Darius Geis, Ronald Jones. I love that mix of risk and a little bit of safety. 
But I do still think that we don't have the safest running backs. Aaron Jones was touchdown dependent, even though I think he's going to get a ton of touchdowns still because that offense liked to give it to him. And he was incredibly efficient in the red zone. And over the last three years, he's been pretty much the most efficient running back in the red zone. Just because he's not big does not mean that he can't be good in the red zone. Chris Carson has gotten injured for sure. And if he fumbles one more time, how is Pete Carroll going to react? Like he has fumbled so many times that if he doesn't fix that issue, I don't know what Pete Carroll is going to do. Darius Geis, obviously very risky player. We've never seen him put it all together in a healthy season. And Ronald Jones, we don't know exactly what's going to happen. They do have some other solid running backs like Dare, the receiving back, and like Keyshawn Vaughn, who they drafted. We don't know what's going to happen there, so I would like one more running back. So the running backs available are Henderson, Justin Jackson, Antonio Gibson, who I think is a decent pick considering that he could sort of back up Darius Geis here, AJ Dillon to kind of back up Aaron Jones. I like those guys, but I think a lot of them actually will be available on the waiver wire. So I might not need to take any of them because at the end of the day, I do have Ronald Jones, Darius Geis, and Chris Carson. I'm sure one of them at all times should be healthy and producing to back up Aaron Jones and Christian McCaffrey or be our flex spot. We only have one bench spot left and I do want to use that on a backup tight end. So Noah Fant is there who... I think is much better than all of the other guys left pretty much, except for Dallas Goddard. But he, in this draft, won't even really be drafted, I don't think. So we could always pick him up on the waiver wire if we need to. So we'll take Noah Fant here. Absolutely love him. The only concern is that there is a lot of competition on this roster, but I think that's more so going to affect guys like Cortland Sutton because all that talent is at wide receivers. And if anything, it, affect, it would affect Cortland Sutton by having him play less snaps than he should. No one's going to replace Noah Fant. The only concern about having too much talent is that when he's on the field, they won't target him as much as they would be if there wasn't a ton of talent. But I still feel like all that talent is going to affect guys like Cortland Sutton a little more than guys like Noah Fant, who's going to be on the field at all times, pretty much. Now... We have our quarterback to take and a defense and kicker, and that is it. So, Drew Locke is there. Baker is there, who I like taking as a backup quarterback if you want one, but I'm not a fan of taking him and just expecting him to start. Jimmy Garoppolo is good. I just want to make sure that Debo Samuel is going to start the season, because if he's not, then I'm not taking Jimmy Garoppolo. Daniel Jones is a good player. For me, it's between him and Drew Locke. Even though the Broncos have a lot of running backs, they also have a lot of talent at the wide receiver and tight end position. And I think that they'll pass more than teams are expecting them to. I don't think they're going to be a great team. And Drew Locke is a good player. He's a good prospect. And I think that this offense is going to go through him. So we'll take him as our quarterback with possibly expecting to pick up Daniel Jones off of the waiver wire if he is available. Then after I took Drew Locke, Henderson went, three defenses in a row went with Chicago Bears, Pittsburgh Steelers, and Baltimore Ravens, the two rivals in the AFC North. Then we have Baker go, Austin Hooper, Jefferson, Miller, Pittman, three young wide receivers in a row, followed by two kickers in a row between Justin Tucker and Harrison Butker. Three more defenses in a row go. New England, Chargers, and Broncos. Once again, division rivals, AFC West right there between the Chargers and Broncos. Followed by three kickers in a row. Greg Zerline, Will Lutz, and Young Hoku. Once again, more division rivals going. New Orleans and Atlanta right there. And then the Buccaneers defense go. So now it looks like Daniel Jones will be available on the waiver wire. So that's great that will have the opportunity, if this were a real draft, to pick up Daniel Jones. Now we're just looking at defense and kicker. So I think predicting a good defense is a little easier than predicting a kicker. 
for kickers, it is really, really difficult to do. But defense, it is a little easier. And I don't think the Seahawks are going to have a great defense this season. The Titans are in a pretty solid division for defense. And I think their defense is pretty good. And they're going to run a slow offense, just giving it to Derrick Henry all game. So that's good. But especially now that the Vikings don't have Adam Thielen, they're certainly going to play a slow offense, especially if Dalvin Cook's not there. They're really going to throw super short passes, give it to Alexander Madison if Dalvin Cook isn't there. And they have a very, very good defense. So we'll go with the Minnesota Vikings. And of course, we have back-to-back picks, so it doesn't really matter that we took a defense over our kicker. But for our kicker, it really is just predicting good offenses. And I think the Cardinals will have a good offense. Same with Detroit. Same with the Eagles. And that's who I'm really liking here. So we'll just go with Matt Prater here. He's reliable. He's done it for a while. And I like that offense. So we'll take him. Robbie Gould goes. Tony Pollard. Deshaun Jackson. Justin Jackson then. Then two kickers go in a row, Zane Gonzalez and Jake Elliott, followed by John Brown and Preston Williams, who is another player that I covered in my sophomore wide receivers video, link in the description below. And then with the last pick, that team decides to absolutely troll me and take Daniel Jones. So I no longer can pick up Daniel Jones off of the waiver wire if I need to. That's really unfortunate that was his backup quarterback. So it makes sense. He needed a quarterback. He waited all the way till the very end. I would have taken my backup quarterback over my defense and kicker, that's for sure. I mean, he took his defense in the 11th round. Might have preferred to take a backup quarterback there, but whatever. It's all good. I like this team. Let's just do a quick recap here. Drew Locke at quarterback, certainly not the best. Quarterback's probably our weakest position, but there are guys on the waiver wire, and we can always trade for a solid quarterback. Quarterbacks aren't too expensive unless you're trading for Patrick Mahomes or Lamar Jackson. It shouldn't be tough to trade for, let's say, Big Ben here, considering he's this guy's backup. So that should be fine. Christian McCaffrey, best player in fantasy football. Love to have him. And then to have him being backed up by Aaron Jones is tremendous. Even though Aaron Jones certainly has some risk, he has a ton of upside. And there's a chance that Christian McCaffrey and Aaron Jones finish as the RB1 and RB2. I don't think it'll happen, but there's a chance. Then there's Chris Godwin, who could finish as the wide receiver one, which is a lot of upside that we have right there. And Calvin Ridley, who I could easily see finishing as a top five wide receiver. I love that he outscored Julio Jones last season in PPR scoring while they played together. Now Julio Jones is one year older, which is bad for him considering that he's getting to an age where he's almost out of his prime. And Calvin Ridley is one year older, which is good because he's so young. So now he's pretty much entering his prime. He's a third year wide receiver, which historically is one wide receivers break out. We have Tyler Higby, who the Rams absolutely loved at the end of last season. We have Chris Carson, who is so talented, but just has a few concerns regarding injuries and fumbling. Defense and kicker, whatever, they don't matter. I like Matt Prater. I like Minnesota Vikings defense. It's going to suck when Matt Prater kicks a bunch of field goals against the Minnesota Vikings and they lose points, but it's okay. That's what happens when you select division rivals as your defense and your kicker. Then we have Darius Geis, high risk, high reward player right there. We already have three solid running backs, so I think this is a good pick. If he busts, it's not the end of the world, but there's a very good chance he absolutely pays off. Terry McLaurin as my wide receiver three. I love that mix of some safety along with a ton of upside. And then Julian Edelman is a very safe player. We know he's going to be a solid flex player for sure. There's no doubt about it. Ronald Jones is as good as they get when you're taking them in the ninth round. He has a little bit of safety for sure because he is the best running back on this team and he's on a Tom Brady-led offense, but he has a lot of potential for sure, especially if an injury were to happen to Dare, the receiving back, or the rookie Keyshawn Vaughn. Darius Slayton, 
is a risky player who I absolutely love. He's on what should be not a great team at all with a bad defense and a solid offense. Yes, Saquon Barkley is the head of this offense, of course, but Darius Slayton is the wide receiver one most likely on this team, but he's not so good where he's going to be attracting a bunch of attention from defenses. And then with our last bench player, we have our backup tight end, Noah Fant, who is tremendous. Absolutely love him. He's going to go along nice with Drew Locke. And there was a study done that basically found that anytime you're stacking a quarterback and running back or a quarterback and wide receiver or a quarterback and tight end from the same team, that increases your chance of winning that fantasy league. And it makes sense because to win a league, you have to have a phenomenal team and have a little bit of luck because there's 12 total teams, or in this case, 10. So you have to be a really, really good team and put up points. Yes, it's safe to take players from different teams, but at the end of the day, you're not playing to get third and fourth. You're playing to get first. And if you get last, so what? There's no difference between last and fifth in this league. So high risk, high reward. Of course, you need some safety on your team. I added guys like Julian Edelman to my team for that exact reason. Julian Edelman is a very safe player, and I absolutely love that. But nonetheless, Noah Fant, very good player. Love him as my backup tight end for sure. He can absolutely fill in for Tyler Higby when I need him to. So guys, that was it. If you enjoyed this video, I really would appreciate if you hit that like button and subscribe and maybe leave a comment below letting me know what you think I did good on in this draft, what you think maybe were the wrong picks if you think that there were some picks that I should have went with someone else. Let me know. I appreciate that. And once again, I will leave a link in the description below to the Debo Samuel video, which is the first one that you should watch. I'll also leave a link in the description to the series of sophomore wide receivers. I'll leave a link to those videos and I'll also leave a link to the mock draft videos. I've already done two of them. One of them was a PPR 12 team mock draft from the first overall selection. And one of them was same settings, 12 team PPR, but from the second overall selection. And I like both of those teams, but there are a few things actually in the first mock draft that I began not to like so much. And I talked about them in the second mock draft video. So if you want to know what exactly I did wrong there, definitely also check out the second mock draft video that I did because I do talk about it and say what I did wrong in the first one. So that is it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Peace.